<clears throat> now I realized uh, I have another 2828, um, but the board is actually red, um, and all these chips are on the other side, so it's it's totally reversed. I'm not sure if this is a new one and the other one's old, or the other one is new and this is old. Um, so uh, I, I don't really know what to say because there's obviously a couple different versions of this lens. Um, they're identical. They're still a 28-2A. It's just a different. They would update as they went throughout. Um, but that's that's quite a big rebuild. Um, and even the chipboard is actually it looks quite a bit different as well. Um, so it's not just flipped and different colors. There's some different stuff going on. But anyways, um, there definitely is. Uh, there's only one way this really works. So you got the the screw holes coming through there. And that has to be matched up because we're going to be running nuts, and they gotta, they can't hit because we're already maxed out for clearance. So they gotta be able to go in between there when it uh, bellows. So if you if you turn it to the next one, the uh, the pattern's off. So you can see on, almost on, and off. So there's only one way it can go. I'm gonna mark this. So um, I'm gonna run a strip of paint, uh, tape around here, around the bottom, just to cinch it in. Um, and it definitely is holding really tight, nice and tight. So some of you might be asking, you know, you know, you're kind of losing me here. Why are you using tape to um, to uh, hold this together? I mean, this is secure. I have I have no trouble with this as it is with the uh, sticky double side tape, but. But throwing this extra tape is just a little bit of a seat belt. But um, most people don't know this, but a lot of camera uh, manufacturers actually use tape to hold your entire focus together, um, like a Nikon 28 to 80, and uh, you know Sigma has been using it for years. Tamron uses it. Uh, Canon has it in some of their you know cheaper lenses, and some of their high-end lenses you got you got tape in different areas, but it works. Electronics is, uses tape. So I'm not trying to justify it, but um, I'm just saying it's you know it's kind of shocking how often they use it. You pull your rubber grip off of your lens, and you'll see tape holding it together. But it works, you know. Eventually, it breaks down, and you can have problems. But it does work. So, um, yeah. And uh, so um, one thing that we need to make sure is that you got the three rounded uh, cutouts here. Um, don't put tape around those if you're going to cover them with anything. Uh, because that's where this mount is going to feed through. It goes right there, and those screws are going to have to drop through there. So this is what I'm going to be using, just a Dremel, well, it was a job made, but whatever, a Dremel and a bit, that's a Dremel bit. And, um, yeah, I'm just going to be going around here. I'll show you for two seconds, and I'm going to go over the garbage can and do it properly, because I don't want these filings everywhere and then I'm gonna I'll show you the filing how I'm gonna do it but um, this is the bit I'm using I love this bit bit I use it for tons of stuff I use this to AI convert uh, Nikon lenses as well uh, I use this just to chop down the bulk it's such a beefy bit and then I file it with a fine file and I can create some really nice jobs with this So there it is, uh, that uh, Dremel tool is absolutely perfect for this job. Um, I just absolutely love that tool, you guys got to track down. If I find the package I'll put the number in the description, but you saw the, the video of what it looked like, so 
but it, it's this was like I did this whole ring in probably under five minutes, um, just a couple minutes, just zapped it through. So um, it was a it was two millimeters, and now we got down a full millimeter. Um, so it's it's at one millimeter now, and um, it's it's still it's super beefy. So there's no way I'm gonna bend that. Uh, it's pretty thick still, and uh, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean it up, just file it down, and then file it even finer. So I'm just trying to get it level now. It doesn't even have to be perfect because I mean it's tilt shift lens. There's never any. It's never ever gonna be accurate. Um, but what I want to do is just. Uh, get it on level plane so that it mounts nice and flush. So there it is, very pretty. So it's got all the little scratches in it, but that's great because uh, when I squeeze the rubber between the mount, I want to be able to grip on a little bit rougher. So that's perfect. And I was thinking about filing the edges, but it doesn't make any difference and I don't think I will. Just so it's less sharp, but uh, I'll just run a clean it off a little bit. There's a little bit of a burr on there, but I thought I'd just show you this real quick. Um, we have the uh, three mount screws, and then there's this additional screw hole here, um, and uh, it could be for other lenses. It's probably a generic mount, but uh, they just stuck this cork screw in it. However, it could be a grounding or something. I'm not really sure, but. Uh, I'm just going to cut the head off of it uh, and I'm actually just going to glue it in here just for a cosmetic effect. Nothing really important, you just need to fill that hole or you probably don't even have to because the rubber's going to push through anyways, but I thought I'd just stick this back in just make it look a little bit nicer. I'm just using a, uh, a super saw, whatever you call them. So. There it is. I'm just going to glue the belly button in. Ooh, magical. All right, guys, we're getting really close. Uh, so we're into the bellows uh, section of things. Um, now, uh, on the last lens I did, I cut it three uh, bellows, uh, whatever you call them, baffles, whatever. Uh, I went four on this one, um, and the reason was that this lens seemed a little bit longer, and I thought I was gonna stretch it and bolt it in and whatnot, uh, basically I'll show you, but um, I'm not convinced, it's three now, I think it's, uh, or I, I'm not convinced I'm going to need four, I might just need three again, um, so I'll show you what I did though, basically, so this was on here, and then there's like a little rubber top, okay, and so I cut that rubber top off, um, and then, uh, it was, uh, I don't know, it's in the garbage, but, um, that it wasn't, it was too tight, so then I took off just a tiny bit more, uh, I'm talking about maybe a millimeter to two, probably maybe two millimeters extra again, and so that's what it looks like now, and this is very tight, um, but it, it it's gonna be good, um, and then, so I went four, uh, links, because, you know, I'd rather have too much and can take away. Something super important that we need to do is we gotta wash this with soap and water because there is oil residue from the molding. And I'll give you the guys part number uh, in the description. I took a lens cap because it's a super thin piece of plastic. Um, I was trying to find something really thin. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it uh, to the same size as this mount. And then, um, then it's gonna go on the inside, and then we're gonna run, and then this is gonna be on the outside, so it's gonna be like a sandwich squish effect, and we're gonna squish the bellows 
in. And then I'm going to put tape, that double-sided tape in here as well. Um, that way if something happens I can pull them out and I don't, it's not glued. I'm going to use uh, three uh, screws with nuts on the other side and we're just going to squish them. I'm probably going to glue uh, the uh, nuts right on here um, so that when it's in there I can just cinch it.